Hi everybody and welcome to Belgrade, Serbia. This is my first time in Belgrade and really my first time in Serbia and I'm super excited to show you this very beautiful city in my Belgrade 4K video. Belgrade or Beograd, Serbia, as the Serbs call it, is a great place for travelers. It is Serbia's capital and with almost 1.7 million people the largest city in Serbia. There are so many things to see in Belgrade that it can easily get overwhelming. So if you plan your next trip to beautiful Serbia and you pass through Belgrade, this full travel guide Belgrade video will provide a complete yet subjective view of my 20 best of Belgrade tips for this amazing city in Serbia. What I like in Belgrade is its diversity of things to do. Whether you're interested in good food, nature, history, shopping, sites of worship or culture, Belgrade Serbia is a great place that offers something for everyone. Belgrade is one of the great European cities for travel and one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in Europe and the world. One of the most important prehistoric cultures of Europe, the Vincha culture, evolved within the Belgrade area already 8,000 years ago. Belgrade sits right at the point where the rivers Danube and Sava meet and has historically always been a strategically important location. This has not been to the advantage of its citizens as the city has been battled over in 115 wars and raced 44 times, being bombed 5 times and besieged many more times. It changed hands between the Celts, Romans, the Byzantine, Frankish and Bulgarian empires, the Kingdom of Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, with some periods of independence in between. It's been the capital of Yugoslavia for much of the last century and is a fascinating historic place in Eastern Europe. Today, it's a bustling beautiful city in Europe and offers so many historic sites in the city. But let's dive right into my top 20 best of Belgrade list that I compiled during my trip to Belgrade. I have tried to organize the landmark as a walking tour so you can plan your visit of this amazing city to visit in Europe in the most economic way. Here's a map of all the landmarks we will look at. The Serbia travel video has chapters, so please feel free to jump to the chapters that are most interesting for you. Let's check out the top 20 things to do in Belgrade, Serbia. Number 1. Traditional Serbian breakfast. Let's start this video with a hearty Serbian breakfast. Breakfast in Serbia is rich in calories and carbohydrates and meant to provide one with an abundance of energy to start the day. Fresh bread and burek, a fluffy fried pastry you will find all across Serbia and the Balkans, is frequently served with butter, jam, yogurt, sour cream or cheese, accompanied by dried beef or bacon, sausage, eggs, ajwar and kashmak. I had my breakfast at the terrace of the beautiful Metropole Palace Hotel from where you can get an amazing view of the city. But there are plenty of kafanas, small traditional restaurants that serve excellent Serbian breakfasts throughout the city. Alternatively, just go into one of the pekaras, the Serbian bakeries, which will have a rich selection of fresh pastries and of course burek as a cheap and very filling alternative. Number 2. San Sava Church After the nice Serbian breakfast, we are ready to explore our first major sightseeing highlight of Belgrade, San Sava Church. San Sava Church is the largest Orthodox church in the Balkan region and the second largest in the world. You cannot miss this beautiful monumental church which sits high on the Rachar Plateau. This makes San Sava Church a great fixed point in the Belgrade skyline as it is visible from almost everywhere. The temple is built on the site where the Ottoman Grand Vizier Sinan Pasha burned San Sava's relics after his icon had graced flags during the Serbian uprising in 1594. Construction began in 1935, 340 years after that event, and ended as recently as 1989. The 4,000 tons heavy dome is an architectural masterpiece and the interior of the church truly stunning. So I'm here at the San Sava Cathedral in Belgrade and if there's one cathedral that you want to see while in the city, this is the one. Definitely check it out when you're here. It's really impressive. It has a massive dome and a beautiful mosaic work that has just recently been completed. Let's check it out.
Number 3. Nikola Tesla Museum Nikola Tesla is regarded as one of the most important inventors using electric current and magnetism in history. Born in Smiljan, a small town north of Sadar in Croatia, Serbs consider Tesla a national hero nevertheless, as this town used to be part of Serbia. This explains why there is a small but excellent museum on Tesla in Belgrade. The museum presents the life and work of the great physicist, inventor and electrical engineer with a number of personal effects, photographs and correspondence. In addition, a guided tour provides a great interactive experience of some of the fascinating inventions using full functioning reproductions of electric machinery such as an induction coil that produces discharges at 500,000 volts. If you're interested in science, this museum is a must-see in Belgrade. Number 4. St. Mark's Church Not far from the Nikola Tesla Museum, heading downtown on Nikola Pajica Avenue, crossing Taj Mahjan Park, you will see the imposing St. Mark's Church, a Neo-Byzantine church with sublime iconostasis. The church is a serene and spiritual place and definitely worth seeing. Some say it is the most beautiful church in Belgrade, built after the design of the medieval Serbian monastery Grajanica in Kosovo. The more traditional design of this church, which was only completed in 1940, is quite different from the domed temple design of St. Saba Church. The crypt of St. Mark's Church also contains the remains of the only Serbian emperor, Stefan Dujan, who was king of Serbia from 1308 to 1355, another reason why this church is so special for Serbs. Number 5. The National Assembly Just behind St. Mark's Church, you will see the impressive building of Serbia's National Assembly. The Beaux Arts style building formerly housed Yugoslavia's parliament and must be the most photogenic building in Belgrade. Given its function, the building is closed to the public, but once in a while tours are offered. Also try to come by at night, when the building is beautifully lit. Number 6. Starry Dwar and Novi Dwar Opposite the National Assembly, you will get to a small park which is framed by two more iconic buildings in Belgrade, the old and new palaces built for the Obrenovic and Kara Djordjevic royal families respectively. Starry Dwar and Novi Dwar face each other and house Belgrade City Assembly and the President's Residency respectively. The old palace dates to the 1880s and is kept in Beaux Arts architecture and the new palace was completed in 1922 and follows revivalist architecture. Number 7. The Automotive Museum Crossing the street again, past the National Assembly building, let's head to a less known sightseeing gem in Belgrade. Situated in an unassuming custom-built private garage from 1929, the museum displays about 50 old and rare cars and related exhibits like tools, old documents, artwork, signage and even a vintage gas station. 
The cars on display range from early 20th century up to the 70s and include everything from race cars to presidential limousines, all carefully maintained by the museum owners. The exhibits are nicely complemented by short descriptions and technical data. For a small fee, you get a fantastic tour through automobile history. If you are a fan of vintage cars, this place is a must-see. But even if you're not crazy about cars, you will enjoy the rustic atmosphere of the place that takes you back a few decades in time. Plan to spend about half an hour here. Number 8. The Skandalica Bohemian Quarter From this rather hidden gem, let's walk to one of the more well-known tourist landmarks in Belgrade, Skandalica Bohemian Quarter. Skandalica is a pedestrianized cobblestone paved artist quarter that is Belgrade's version of the Montmartre in Paris. Skandalica has been a Bohemian artist hangout since the 1800s and had its glory days in the early 1900s when famous but cash-strapped Serbian singers, musicians, writers and poets lived, worked and performed here. But the past century Belle Epoque spirit lives on in the many colorful restaurants, bars, cafes and bistros that invite for a rest with nice Serbian food. In the evening, the place turns into a lively nightlife spot. Skanalica is a great place in Belgrade, Serbia, so definitely have a look when you're in the city. And make sure to check out the artistic places in some of the side alleys and interior courtyards that are somewhat hidden from the main streets. Number 9. Bajloni Market, an outdoor farmer's market. At the end of Skandalica, you will get to Bajluni Market, a farmer's market and one of the few traditional outdoors markets that still exist in Belgrade. Bajluni Market is one of the oldest open green markets in Belgrade and it's a great place to buy fresh fruit and vegetables, flowers, cheese and dairy products, fresh meat and baked goods. Prices here are way below the ones you will find in supermarkets and the quality of the produce is top notch. What I liked here was that the place was only frequented by locals. Strolling through this market and soaking in the special atmosphere was a memorable experience in Belgrade for me. Number 10. Republic Square Let's head back up the hill to the most dynamic part of Belgrade city center, Republic Square. Republic Square might be the beating heart of Serbia's capital. A place where more than 20 trolley bus and bus lines converge, this imposing square features the famous Prince Mihail monument, which is hard to overlook. Designed by the Italian sculptor Enrico Pazzi, this statue depicts Mihail Obrenovic, who was Prince of Serbia twice in the mid-1800s. He played an important role in the Balkans' independence from the Ottoman Empire. The square is framed by a number of important landmark buildings, such as the esteemed National Theatre and the National Museum. The National Theatre offers daytime backstage tours, but the actual performances are arguably even more exciting, and starting at only about $7 per ticket, Watching a drama, opera or ballet at the theatre becomes an affordable cultural highlight of a visit to Belgrade. But back to the square. Republic Square is also the starting point of Gnes Mihailova Street, where we are going next. Number 11. Gnes Mihailova Shopping Street. Gnes Mihailova is Belgrade's pedestrian zone and the main shopping street of Serbia's capital. You haven't been to Belgrade if you haven't spent at least a little bit of time strolling through Gnes Mihailova with its many international brand stores, upmarket boutiques and local shops, bars, restaurants and cafes. It is one of the most expensive streets in the city per square meter and seems to be always busy no matter what time of the day you come. Let's walk down Gnes Mihailova towards our next tour highlight, Belgrade Fortress. Along the way, check out the beautiful stuccoed neoclassical mansions that frame the street on both sides.
Belgrade Fortress. At the northern end of Gnes Mihailova, you will get to the beautiful Kalemegdan Park, which marks the entrance to the plateau, which is the home of Belgrade Fortress. Belgrade Fortress occupies likely the most historic part of Belgrade city. Located right on the tail ridge where the Danube and Sava rivers meet, the fortress stands high on one of the most strategic locations in the Balkans. Over two millennia of conflict, the fortress protected the city but has also seen quite a bit of bloodshed. Nowadays, it's a vast area that is dotted with large trees, historic monuments, museum artifacts and excellent lookouts that offer amazing views over and across the Danube and Sava rivers. An estimated 2 million visitors per year come here, which makes Belgrade Fortress the most visited monument in Belgrade. It's also the best location to see the sunset in Belgrade. Best of all, entrance is free, and you can roam around the park and the old citadel for hours, soaking in the relaxing atmosphere of the place. Number 13. Belgrade Military Museum When you wander around Belgrade Fortress, it is hard to overlook the many displays of modern and historic military hardware ranging from deactivated mines, Second World War tanks and artillery and more antique cannons. They all belong to the Military Museum, which has been housed in the fortress already since 1878. Some of the weapons on display go back all the way to the ancient Greeks and Romans with helmets and blades that are more than 2,000 years old. But the museum also shows some more recent military equipment from the 1999 Balkan War. Number 14. Gardar's Millennium Tower For our next landmark, we cross the Sava River and drive along the Danube to Gardar's Tower, which dates back to the time of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Throning over the right bank of the Danube, Gardrisch Tower was built in 1896 to celebrate
Zimun Riverside. Just a short walk down Gardish Tower, you will get to the Danube and one of the most beautiful nature sites of Belgrade, Simunski Kay or Simon Riverside. Simunski Kay is a long waterside promenade and hence down the best place in Belgrade to walk along the Danube. It's a long green area with plain trees, street vendors, artists, small restaurants, boat houses, barges and other old vessels, including the famous Belgrade's Plavovi. I particularly enjoyed watching the many swans and ducks along the shore. It's a relaxed place and definitely worth seeing. Number 16, Aratsinganlicha Island. From Zemunski Cay, I'm going to head over to the other side of Sabra River again, to another amazing riverside leisure time location, Aratsinganlicha Island. This relatively expensive island on the Sava has been reclaimed and turned into a peninsula. It's the green lung of the city in the middle of Belgrade and full of forests and greenery. It has become the number one sports and exercise location for locals who come here to do jogging, rowing and kayaking on the lake or playing golf, tennis and basketball. But Adasigalitsa is also a great place for lounging on a pebble beach or relaxing or partying in one of the many splavobi, the floating restaurants, bars or nightclubs on barges and boats that line the river. Tip number 17, the old railway station. Let's head over to the old railway station that was built in 1884 as a terminal railway station similar to the Sarkezi station in Istanbul, which I'm covering in my Istanbul video series. It was the main railway station of Belgrade and the busiest one in the country until the transfer of railway traffic to the new Belgrade Center Station Prokop in 2016. Since 2018, it has been renovated to become a museum with a modern park that offers free Wi-Fi. The transfer was a major urban planning undertaking to make space for the new Belgrade waterfront project and was controversial in Belgrade. Some say it lost its charm as a meeting place for locals, but the building and statue are nevertheless really beautiful and I recommend to come here at night when the square is beautifully lit. What makes the square particularly special is a huge modern statue of Stefan Nemanja. Stefan Nemanja was the Grand Prince of the Serbian Grand Principality in the late 1100s, who founded what would evolve into the Serbian Empire, as well as the National Church. Part of the statue is subterranean and can be seen through a glass floor.
20, have a traditional dinner. After the amazing sunset at Mont Avala, let's head back down into the city for a nice dinner in one of the many kafanas, traditional restaurants that serve Serbian cuisine. I chose the ethnic restaurant Zavijay that serves many tasty traditional Serbian dishes. I chose some mixed grilled meats, which were delicious. The menu is in Serbian and English, and the staff will tell you all about the origins of the meals and what they include. The place is very close to the old railway station, so in case you haven't seen it at night, that's the opportunity to go and see the beautifully lit building. And here's my bonus tip, Belgrade at night. If you still have some energy in you, why not go for a night walk through Belgrade? Spending a night in Belgrade and seeing the bustling capital city at night when the streets start to quiet down and the many Beaux-Arts buildings are lit makes for a special atmosphere. I made a separate video on my night walks in Belgrade, which you may like as well. Mm -hmm.